Hello and welcome back to Adam. Last time we stumbled around quite a bit and we couldn't get in the bunker. It's, it's a bit messy in these type of games. You don't really know where to go exactly, but hopefully it's gonna be clearer in, uh, in, in well, in a few levels at least. <clears throat> but we do have a clear goal this time. It's just get to the drunken lair and make all those guys pony up, pay a lot of money, and hopefully we're gonna get some of that. And we don't have uh, the option to really do too much uh, of fighting right now. We need companions, we need money, we need better gear. I do believe the character is going to be good in the long run, but we are kind of struggling right now. I decided to up the speechcraft to 80, that's the only change that I did. Because it's the only skill that's actually useless, uh, or useful for us. And, uh, well... Useless, completely useless for fights, uh, that's what I was thinking, but it's the only skill that allows us to avoid the fights and possibly uh, allows us to solve uh, challenges alternatively. So, that's it. Uh, we're going. So, we're just gonna talk to them and hope they don't kill us. That's it! <laughs> Break plans! An ordinary waste dweller walks your way. Want to talk to him? Sure. I want to kind of stabby people in the in the waist. Don't shoot. I'm harmless. You say that now, but I want to shoot you in the face. It just makes me want to shoot you. Uh, let's, let's not shoot him. You see a nervous bloke in a protective face mask. He looks surprising. Sus he looks suspiciously and not. To you in a greeting gesture. What's your name? What's your job? What? You're a construction worker? Where are you heading? You heard something interesting? Okay, so he knows. Whoa, what the fuck? That's all he has? That's That's really good. Can I take his stuff? Can I just kill this guy? Okay, I should go now. Can I? Okay, let. Can I shoot him in the face? I hope the, the sh I hope his sheep is not gonna attack me. That would be stupid. So he's injured. Almost dead. And he's down. Whoa, I'm down too! Doggy! Oh fuck, shoot the dog in the head. Oh, run away! I'm dead? I died to a dog? That's dumb. I wanna try it again. If it fails, we're just gonna leave him alone. But I'm 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 thirsting for blood. Fuck. I need to run away. I was really hoping he's not gonna hit me. Slightly injured. We got lucky. So unlucky. Injured with... Yeah, it's not gonna work. Oh, I could drop Traveler so easy if I if I didn't suck so much. Okay, we're gonna do it third time. That That's the last one. I hate this. But I need some... Oh, do I have bullets for my shotgun? Oh boy, we have bullets. We can do an aim shot. But how much damage is this? Is there is good damage? What? No, no, no. This, this can be it. 8 to 10, mid range. Oh, he took a lot of damage. It, it takes so much to reload it. 
This is unusable because it takes like a freaking year to reload this thing. Can I shoot him in the head? It doesn't work. It deals a lot of damage. I'll give you that. I'm down so bad. Oh my god, what was that? 28th HP critical. Alright, well done game, you really got me. So, I still suck at fights. And that shotgun that they gave me is actually pretty damn useless. So, I'm going. Fuck you, Traveler. I want to kill you. I just... Can I kill your sheep? I need, I, I need some blood. I'm freaking sick and tired that I, I can't, can't fight anybody. Not one guy. The last last glory I got was like was by killing rats in the first area of the game, but that's by uh, kicking them in the face and running away. Small group of scavengers. Yeah, there's zero chance that we can take on multiple scavengers. Okay, this is more like a trader. Let's see what he has. The same guy. Hatchet. Seven dexterity. I don't have that. A joint. So some heels. Scarfy dots. Meh. Okay, I'll be on my way. They're not really setting any upgrades. I don't know what to do. I got a pistol. That pistol is okay. Maybe even better. Pro probably better than my, I, my knife. But of course the pistol has range. Wait, what is this? Oh, nice! Finally, we saw, found some place. Maybe... Uh, this place doesn't have um, impossible enemies, or maybe some lovely chat, or maybe even a companion. Isn't this the gas station uh, those crazy people talked about? Oh, look at that. It does look like a gas station, but would you really wanna spend the night here? Young man. Good day! At ease. Identify yourself, soldier. Private Karenin. Carrying out military service at uh, Filling Station Fortress. Really? I don't know. Alright. I'm not sure if I want to ask these people. Attention. Are you high? Come on, bro. Don't feel shy. Go and tell me. What's your poison? I don't know. The sc soldier scratches his beard. Bearded. What? And eventually... The sc soldier scratches his bearded and eventually breaks into a stupid smile. So, only beard. Ah, oh, hell with it. You look like a decent pal. Well, I might have smoked some devil's weed. Just a little. For medical purposes, you see? It's so boring here. You just have to relax once in a while. You get me, man? I have no problem with that. But not on duty. Bro, I wouldn't refuse to have smoke myself. Bring the joint if you have it. Seriously? You want me to smoke too? I understand. Nah, just joking. I don't smoke on duty. It doesn't work if I, my work at all? Okay, fine. I don't know. I wanna cut down on the chit chat a little bit. Take all. Whoa, what is that? A oh, broken shovel handle? Blah. 
Look like the, a bloody hammer. Interesting knife you have there. Uh, family heirloom. The guy throws the knife in the air and catches it awkwardly, really chopping off his fingers. Oh! Shit! No, well, maybe it did belong to someone else. Uh, someone's family once. I got it when I joined the outpost. It's a burden rather than a weapon, honestly. When you throw it, it flies handle forward. During sparring, the guy kicks it out of my hand with the very first blow. I tried to peel potatoes with it once and it cut my hand. Keep your perker up. Uh, let me see it. Maybe it's not as bad as it sounds. Failure! True. Well, we can... What? Well, what can you do? Let's change the subject. Yeah, I don't know. Nothing interesting. Let's change the subject. I don't want to talk to you, mate. I did talk to so many NPCs that ha that had a lot to say. No, no. They had nothing to say, basically. But they took a long time to say it. Okay, we got a woman here. Hello, are you traveling? Yeah, I'm passing by your fortress. Well, the fortress is, isn't mine. I'm just temporarily living in it. What brings you here? Um... What do you mean? Uh, I'm just passing by. Oh, you're worse than local soldiers. There's nothing to talk about with you about. Well, uh, what was it you wanted? Uh, what do you do here, if you don't mind, mind me asking? I've got one business here. As soon as I'm ready, I'll do it and bid farewell to the filling station fortress and farewell to this dusty crossroads. Mm, do you need any help with this business of yours? Not really, I can manage. Sure. Another soldier boy. I don't know. Let's not talk to all these soldier boys. His name is Kashan. What's yours? My name is... Babe. Helga Schwarzowitz. Ogdam. Babe? What's a weird name you've chosen for yourself? Yeah, alright. What did you come here for? So much talking. Okay, what is this? I'm not an expert, of course, but uh, you better quit smoking with a cuff like that. Nothing really see ya. Oh boy. Can I talk to the... The one who's actually running the shop here? Here we go. A well built man is sitting in front of you. The soldier looks around uh, 50 years old. Uh, this shows in the grayness that appears here. And there in his black hair, in the heavy gaze of an experienced warrior that pierces right through you. Even his posture speaks of that special pre type of training that you've seen a lot among uh, the Atom ranks. Okay. Attention, you also notice uh, a bunch of old scratches on the surface of uh, this lucky charm. Yeah. Hello, comrade. What do you want? <clears throat> I have a report. One of your soldiers takes illegal drugs on duty. <laughs> no. Sorry, I was just passing by. I've got a couple of questions for you. Do I? The man raises his eyebrow in surprise. Well, ask away. I don't care about his lucky charm. I don't care about knowing him. Okay, never mind that. I want meaningful conversation. I don't care about it. Whatever. I don't know what to do. Mm. That's nothing. I better go. I don't know. So they took over this outpost. 
and they all, they all have their own stories. I don't know, I just I just ran through so many characters at this point that I'm a little bit burned out. Uh, and I wasn't terribly... Like, they have their stories, but I'm not... Ultimately, they just tell their story and it just, it just ends up being filler. It doesn't matter. Sometimes it's interesting. Uh, it is. But for the most part, like, 90% of them is just filler... Doesn't really do anything, and not really interesting. I think this... I don't know, I don't know. I don't really know. How I'm gonna approach this. You see a trading caravan, do you wanna stop and trade? Okay. When I when I run into these trading caravans, they tend to have the same stuff, but maybe it's gonna change. It, it's definitely gonna change with level, I believe. Level. Uh, come on, give me some good stuff. Let's see your wares. Protective. Five stealth. You're not really selling anything that really interests me. I'm not a huge fan of crafting. But we might want to pop in here. Well, that's, that's radioactive, isn't it? I don't know. Alright, let's just leave. Okay, now we're going to the cave. I can't resist. I can't resist the bloody cave. We have to go in. It would be nice if the game showed, like, uh, secondary NPCs and primary NPCs. And I say this as, as someone who actually uh, you tend to enjoy just talking to all the NPCs. Uh, but, um, I don't know. I think they, they could have cut down the, the chit-chat here and there. Because it just truly feels like filler. A lot of times. Um... Oh. Yeah, I don't really get excited about finding some... A brick, plus two uh, glasses and a spoon. But that's just kind of the crafting system. <clears throat> I kind of want to find a companion because so... So far I'm, I'm very restricted. Alright, let's go. I want to get to the drug something something distillery and finally, finally intimidate the hell out of them. I want a mission, so I don't have time for this th thing. Interesting that on the... Oh, crap. On the map, she looks exactly the same. You stumble upon a... Fuck, we need to escape. Didn't do it. <laughs> this this feels so bad. <laughs> okay. Um. Wait, what? I can move around. Oh yeah. I should be able to take out some flies. Can I? Okay, let, let's go one more. Yeah, that's no good. I just go with regular slash and run away. in peace. Now yeah, we're just gonna attack and run away. I can do this. This is the old trick. Okay, my melee sucks. Almost dead. Attack me, rat! Yeah, 
I've got to keep running away. It's a bit odd. But this is the only way to not take damage. Uh, we're gonna take that. I have to say this feels good. Find that I can kill something. Our morale is at an all-time low. <laughs> God damn it. Okay, take all. Uh, sure. This doesn't really give me anything. And I'm pretty sure that this place... Uh, don't have any loot. This is just a neutral fighting area, basically. So, let's go. I know I left a uh, fly, but I'm not that eager to get the maximum experience. Drunken Lair! Finally. And I have 80 speech, which should be... I'm not basing it on anything, but I just... Just spent with 80 myself, but it should be enough for whatever uh, we need to do here, hopefully. You see a sick, pale, gaunt uh, man dressed in what looks like a burlap coat. The man is looking around dumbly and is uh, ceaselessly sniveling. As he sees you, however, he livens up and raises his hand in protest. Wait, wait! Don't come any closer, I'm contagious! Ah, Now bless you. What's wrong with you? What disease are you suffering from? Oh, it's terrible disease. Have you heard about the Krasnov syndrome? I have. <clears throat> That's good. That's very good that you're aware of it. Forewarned is forearmed. Although I got the Krasnov syndrome right after I learned about it. Really? Good job the diesel merchant told me about this cure for my disease. At least now, I <coughs> I have a chance to survive. Although since I started the treatment, the disease has been fighting back. Toma cramps, constant nausea, vomiting, still at least now there's a hope. Um, it's probably feeding you poison. Uh, tell me about the remedy he recommended you. The only one that truly works. Diesel. You've got to drink it every day or two. Rotten meat tastes better, but it works. Damn it. Each time I drink it, I get awful pain in my stomach. This means that <clears throat> the disease is waning. Whenever that merchant comes here, I always buy diesel bottles from him. That's fucked up. What are you talking about? That asshole is poisoning you to make a small profit. No way! I can feel I'm getting better by the <coughs> hour. My health improves with each passing minute. The man grabs his stomach with a look suggesting he's about to drop dead. Gradually he recollects himself and continues feebly. Diesel gives me life, a hope for a bright future and stuff like that. You understand that you can make this poor soul change his mind by reasoning with him, much less by trying to scare him. Alright then, listen to my command. The disease leaves your body right this moment. That's how it works. You make an important face and strictly look the patient right in the eye. Surprisingly, it works. The man nods like enchanted and suddenly begins to frantically touch his stomach as if something had has disappeared from it whoa whoa i feel the disease leave my body get out you darn crest of syndrome go back to where you came from <laughs> this is amazing feeling better much better thank you thank you and thank you again i can feel the life force coming back to me i can breathe so easily now since you're cured, I suggest you stop drinking diesel. Right, I have no need for it anymore. From now on, it's just sport and healthy diet. You know what? Why don't you take the remaining bottles? Maybe you'll meet another sufferer that you won't be able to cure with your magic methods. Then at least you can prescribe the diesel to the poor soul. Yep. Thanks for that. 
give me some diesel. Not sure how it looks like. In front of you, there is a short man with mustache. He's wearing a dirty t-shirt that was once decorated with a frivolous tropical patterns. As he sees you, he begins to grin and a net of wrinkles spreads across his friendly face. Hello, sister. Are you free to chat? Only a bad worker refuses a smoke break. I'm Tolik. Nice to meet you. Okay, let's shake arms. Uh, don't shake hands. Yeah, shake hands. Um, he extends his arm for a handshake. <laughs> shake hands in silence. Let's do it. Although his palm is small, his handshake is firm and is becoming uh, to a simple and uh, the simple hardworking man. Tell me, what's happening in the world? We're sitting here like hermits and almost never go to see other people. That's why we were always curious to learn about the latest trends in society. Well, uh, you're not missing much, actually. What should I say? I think the world is getting more dangerous by the day. There are criminals on the roads and monsters in the forests. Stop fretting so much. It was dangerous right after the war. Those were scary times. People don't like to recall them now. If they do recall them, it's always with a shiver because of what was happening back then and what people had to do to survive. Yeah, let's just keep uh, keep uh, my silence. So there. Uh, life is scary, of course, but it's also interesting. It's full of surprises. Ah, okay, I want to ask you something. I don't care. <laughs> oh my god. Do you have a lot of work here? You got plenty of work, but I don't think you're cut for it. You're obviously a traveler, a vagabond, a young woman in search of destiny. While we are, while we here are farmers and amateur chemists, we are attached to our households. Well, quite the assumption you're making of me. How are you? How's life? It, I'm alright, life is going well, everyone in the camp is healthy and happy. Well, relatively healthy and relatively happy, but these are just details. I believe the main thing is that they are alive. Stepka decided to take up sport. It's all thanks to you. Oh, was the guy, was the diesel drinking guy? Oh, Stepka? Alright. Would you care to share some rumors? Uh, there's a rumor that the boss of the local lands, Dan from the factory, has gained support of the Krasno, a city's uh, chamber of commerce. This means that he and his criminal gang are now the main force of the vast wasteland. I don't even know where to feel, uh, whether to feel happy about it or not. On, on the on the one hand, there definitely will be more order. On the other, you can bid farewell to all freedom. Uh, I don't think you should be happy about that. Where can you... No, no, no. I'm, I'm done. I'm done. So, what are we seeing here? This place is pretty small. Okay. You're in therapy? Uh, you do you, man. You do you, I guess. <clears throat> wow. You see a frowning, uh, slouching man of pre-retirement age. He's wearing a stretched sweater with greasy sleeves and uh, thermal ski pants. His uh, disheveled, uh, dark hair have evidently known only one brush, his owner's fingers. <clears throat> Would you like to buy some moonshine? Come on in the house then. Petrovich is in charge of that here. Right. What's your beef, man? What? Uh, just my personal issues, don't worry about it. 
I wouldn't. Tell me, maybe I can help. The man sighs and begins talking slowly as if the world suddenly became unbearably heavy. I'm I'm tempted to go for like a kill everyone playthrough in this game. <laughs> Just <sighs> Do you wanna know about my trouble? Yeah. Tell me tell it to my shotgun. When the war was over, my daughter and I were survivors. My Danya. Oh look at that. We came across a village that was being rebuilt called Pushinsky. We settled there. I can work as a mechanic. I would repair cars and farm machinery the best way I could. <clears throat> when my daughter grew up, she started doing housework and gardening. She was very good at it. We even had a surplus of food we grew. So she would take various cucumbers and tomatoes to the market and exchange them for other goods. There's too much information, get to the point. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm beating about the bush all the time. <clears throat> I can't make myself to get the most Im get to the most important part. It hurts uh, to remember. The man licks his uh, dry lips and uh, sighs heavily. One day bandits came across our village. This is not the important <laughs> part. I'm not sure what happened, but I guess they started extorting money from our chairman. But where could our village get the money from? We would either use it as a potluck or exchange it then the bandits found out there was a car mechanic there they made me take a look at their car and mend it where necessary while i was laboring under the hood one of uh, them saw my daughter and suddenly became so courteous well i thought my dunya managed <coughs> managed to melt even the heart of the bandit the gang decided it was too late and dangerous to go back to the wasteland that night, so they stayed at the, at the village. And in the morning, I couldn't find my daughter. That bandit took her away. He probably offered to give her a ride to the market. I ran to the market, but nobody there saw my dunya. Yeah. It's a common thing in the wasteland. I bet you a hundred rubles that she eloped with him herself. <laughs> the man shakes his head angrily and hits his fist against his palm. Bite your tongue. Not my Dunya. She's a lovely kid, not some god knows who. The man calms down a bit, sighs and sleeks his greasy hair with the outspread palm of his hand. Nonsense. No, she was abducted. That's a fact. I've been looking for them for a long time. I found their camp well. Well, <clears throat> what was left of it, but the bastards themselves weren't any around anymore. And I followed their trace. I saw so many horrible things in the wasteland. I went through a lot. I found a factory not far from here that the bandits had occupied, but I couldn't get inside it, no matter how much I've tried. The guardsmen at the gates only told me that they had no woman there. But where else should I look for her? The gangs of the wasteland are <clears throat> uncountable. Well, I started drinking a lot due to my tragedy. Then found this shack. Here I became needed again. That is my story. And that is why I'm sad. Like you said. The man becomes silent and lowers his eyes. Maybe he went deep in his thoughts, or maybe he just has nothing left to say. But I already know where your daughter is. Why well, have to listen to this? Well, I got some great news for you. I met your daughter. <clears throat> yeah, right. What a coincidence that I just told you about her, and you suddenly remembered you met her. I'm serious. She lives at the factory. Describe Dunya to him. At first the man is listening to you with distrust, then with animated surprise and finally with feverish excitement. When you're done, he throws his hands in the air and almost screams. Yes! Yes! This sounds just like her! But, oh, I can't believe it. How is she? She's safe and sound. She's missing you. As it turned out, she and that bandit really fell in love with each other and uh, now they live together. 
that that's that's the truth. The man looks at you, bewildered. Fell in love? This can't be true. That's not how I raised her. You're making it up. Tell me how now what really happened. Chill, the bandit turned out to be a decent fellow. I wouldn't say that. You're doing it love with him because you have never approved of them being together. They were there for a fucking day. So I think Dunya just wanted some adventure and pro probably uh, never mind that. Like I, I can understand it, but this is a this is a tough uh, uh, I don't know tough situation. I don't really believe in their love. I guess just Dunya just got really really sick of uh, spending uh, her time uh, in some. Stupidly boring town, <clears throat> like village, more like it, or who knows, like probably like a dozen of people or, or anything, and there's, there's no one to spend time with. Anyway, uh, chill the bandit, maybe it's just a passing. Well, oh, hey, I'm just passing on the news, don't get angry at the messenger. Oh man. I think I gotta go with that. I don't, I wouldn't say that the band is a decent fellow. I'm just passing the news, okay? The man stomps his foot angrily, as if getting ready to start arguing, but instead he only waves his hand dismissively. How can it be? I've been looking for her, thinking that my Dunya is either dead or enslaved, while she's been living peacefully at the factory all this time. I mean. It's good that she's been living peacefully, but why run away like that, without proper goodbye or even leaving a note, like disappearing off the face of the earth? He sadly purses his lips and st starts rubbing his eyes that have gone red. In the tone of uh, the man's voice, you begin to hear unusual notes of complaint. At least she could come see her old man. I'm not allowed to go visit them at the factory. What do you mean? <clears throat> well, now that she knows where you are, she might come see you. By the way, uh, what are you going to give me for this news? <laughs> You're right, it gives me hope. Listen, I'm not a rich man, but this is all I have. And one moment. The man takes a sack of his bag, and after rummaging at it, he procures 30 rubles in crumbled, greasy notes. Two tin cans and a plastic bag with crumbly crackers, dry like the Karakum Desert. Here you are. All this will definitely come in handy to a traveler. And now I need some time to think. Maybe I'll try to find this village. Or maybe she'll come herself. Good luck! Great. <clears throat> that was just some guard! Okay. They all have so much to say. They're just oversharing. It's just so much so that it's just unrealistic. No one would go out of their way. Like, imagine if you just talk to someone, it's just like, not, 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 even, talk to, not, not even talk to someone. Imagine if you just went out to the streets and every single guy, or every single person who saw, who you, who you just, you glimpsed, like, you could just go up to them and like, it, it was just, they come up to you and you just talk for hours. Every single person. I don't know. Like, it, it's kind of impossible to compare uh, game to real life. But it just, it just, it's just a bit weird. Yo, wait, 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 wait. A ginger uh, bearded man snivels and nods tentatively as you approach him. He smiles cautiously and waves his hand at you amicably. Uh, wow. You're way too cowardly for a guardsman, my friend. You need to be a braver. Um... Why am I calling him a coward? 
The man shrugs tiredly and looks at you with a deep sadness in his eyes. This is what I'm like. We can't be helped, but that's what the times are like now. Scary times. One has to stay vigilant. Always. Keep looking around, otherwise you may be stabbed to death. These are all sorts of evil people. There are all sorts of evil people around. Hmm. You're right! Exactly. That's what I'm talking about. It's as if everyone has gone mental. A careless word. And they attack you. Or even try to kill you. As for wild animals, it's best not to think of them at all when uh, the dust comes, or else they'll come after you. Uh, God forbid, of course. <clears throat> yes, one shouldn't let one's guard down. I've, I'm on business here? I've got something very important to discuss with you. Oh, this is the guy. The man licks his dry lips and blinks several times. Discuss what? Hey countrywoman, you better talk to Petrovich. He's our boss. You should discuss all the issues with him. He's in our house right now, so there. I came from the factory, guys, my friend. I'm here to make a deal about protection. Uh oh I've been telling Petrovich for ages that it's time we got it. High time. But he wouldn't listen. We need protection, I'm telling you. Try to convince him about it, otherwise we'll be eaten alive. Don't worry, I'll talk to him. The man, the man begins to nod and bowing his head respectfully. Steps free, uh, straps away, away from you. Sure. Potato peeler man, what the hell? Ugh. You wanna uh, share your life story with me as well? <clears throat> <laughs> How about some some questions? Hello, going then? Maybe you kill my boredom. How's life? I'm just living life. I help a uh, man with everything right now. I'm peeling potatoes for the moonshine. After that, Petrovich and I will start brewing. In general, I'm not very interested. It's not very interesting work, but easy and calm. Tell me about Petrovich. Petrovich is sort of our boss here. He's a nice kind man. Before the war he was a ranger in the local forests. I couldn't say anything bad about him even if I had a habit of bad mouthing people. He's nearby, standing uh, by the moonshine still. You can talk to him if you, yourself if you want. Thanks, I guess I'm gonna do that. Seems like Mr. Potato Peeler man doesn't have a, a lot to say. Petrovich? Where the hell are you? Wait. Oh, he's he's in there. Should I take a picture? I took a photo, but why? All right, Petrovich. Uh, let's talk. <clears throat> An old man with an eye patch. On his left eye standing in front of you. He's wiping an empty glass bottle with important look, turning it in his hands as if uh, looking for the stains he missed. The bottle is spanking clean. As he notices you, the man puts down his bottle and gives you a short nod as a greeting. A sparkle of curiosity appears in his eye for a mere second before extinguishing. In a screechy, uneven Due to his age but still confident voice, he pronounces <clears throat> A fresh face. Did you come to get our stuff? Get your loot out? We got a barter system here. We exchange moonshine for other goods, although we can sell it for money too, if you have any. I see. Will you give me a discount? I greatly appreciate it. Sorry, we don't do discounts here for the mere appreciation, otherwise we have gone out of business long ago. Okay, let's change the subject. Give me a discount! Give me a discount, old man! I can keep retrying it. 
Give me a discount. He doesn't like it. For this alone, you die. I have an important question to ask you. Without putting the ball down, the man folds his arms across his chest and looks at you expectantly with his only eye. The times are changing. Someone has to take care of the security in the wasteland. Let's go with that. The man tilts his head a bit and impatiently scuffs his shoe on the wooden floor. I'm not a young man. I understand too well that the times are constantly changing. Better tell me what is you're trying to say. I'm not gonna project dominance. I'm trying to say that the factory guys are offering you protection for a certain price. They're not offering. They're demanding money. <clears throat> oh, I should have guessed. Guessed it. We are the only people around here who are not yet paying tribute to Dan and his cutthroats. Sooner or later, he was bound to send someone to speak to us. To this self-proclaimed baron that my answer remains the same. Resounding no. We can protect ourselves, both from the bandits and from your gang. <clears throat> I've seen your yeah. I've seen your fighters. They are terrified of their own shadows and have no idea what side of the rifle to hold onto. I don't know. Wait a minute. Let's approach this diplomatically. What do you need to agree to it? That's a good question. The man throws a quick glance at you. He looks surprised, but is trying to hide it. What I need? Well, maybe I don't have any reason to agree to it. I'm happy with the way things are. We make our own living and protect ourselves. We don't really need your support. <clears throat> I can see that daft intimidation won't do here. You're a respectable man and we would like to work with you, not just milk your business. <laughs> We gotta go with the next level, uh, scamming. <laughs> of course it didn't work. The old man rubs his chin in contemplation and looks at you in doubt. That's a good story, but it's hard to believe. Sure, your group may be useful, but in my opinion, it brings me it brings more harm than good. You're a difficult man. I'm beginning to lose my patience. Infinite patience? The old man knits his brows together angrily and moves away from you a bit. I'm not in the mood for arguing. If you're trying to create conflict, now look for some other victim. Or even better, go do some sports. This <clears throat> will also rid you of excessive aggressiveness. There's no way to get out of it. Either I project strength with strength that I'm not the best at. Slap the old man on his face. Stop showing off, old man. <clears throat> what if I smash everything here? That, that's, I don't like this because all of these options are not something I would choose. I guess I'm really picky when it comes to uh, RPG options. Don't be rude, old man. I'm warning you. I don't like this. What if I smash everything here? The one-eyed old man folds his arm across his chest and looks at you skeptically. You wouldn't dare. Everything in here costs a lot of money. You wouldn't bring yourself to do it. <clears throat> Maybe I should kick your head in instead. You're talking rubbish. Let's see. Shall we better whether I can bring myself to do it or not. Fine, let's try to have peaceful negotiations. <clears throat> How can it be peaceful? I keep telling you that we don't need protection. And you disagree with it. Perhaps you are too zealous about your work. In any case, this is diamond cutting diamond. I'm sure you yourself have been thinking about extra protection. <laughs> what the fuck is that line? <laughs> Oh, but not from the people you actually need protection for, from. <laughs> it's like, 
fucking uh, hiring robbers to uh, fucking guard your house. <laughs> Is it fucking gonna work? Let's do it. The one eyed old man shakes his head. You're wrong. The only person who's been thinking about it is your boss. I'm happy with the, the way things are. So that's how this conversation is going to go. You know, I can easily start trashing this place. That's right. Even your beloved moonshine still. I need to go with... Can I... No, I can't put in more points into my, my persuasion. I don't believe you. You're just bluffing. Everything in here costs a lot of money. You're talking rubbish. Let's see. Shall we... Okay. I'm not gonna hit the old man. You're talking brush. Let's see, shall we, whether I can bring myself to do it or not. Turn over your stool. Hit the ball with my fist. How about that? Was that supposed to scare me? Nursing your... Her fist? I'm only getting started. <laughs> Turn over a stool. <clears throat> Should I smash bottles? This is bullshit. Where do I leave this uh, conversation? I don't want to. I smash the bottles. What do you think you're doing? Stop that. That's enough. Oh, you don't like it? I can break the moonshine still. Can I just ex escape this conversation? What is this? Let me just reload. I can't even I can't even enter the Let's break the moonshine still. I don't have a choice. I don't have a bloody choice. What is this? This is not okay. So I smashed the still. Hey, don't you dare. You regret doing it. It doesn't sound confident. It looks like you made an impression of a rather unscrupulous woman ready to do anything to reach your goal. <laughs> it's best not to cross someone like that. On the other hand, the moonshine still is the main source of income for the moonshiner and his uh, mates. All of a sudden, the situation gets very heated. Why not just get in the guards and kill me? <laughs> Swing the stool, but stop just in time. That's based on my luck? Fuck me! That's never gonna work. I just stop just in time. You could swear that you stopped the stool heading towards the moonshine stool just in time, but the clatter of the breaking glass and the uh, the crutch of the clay, funnels and plastic membranes paints a different picture. This proves to be enough for the fury furious moonshiner to jump at you, swinging his fist and calling all his friends for help. The fight is imminent. That's great. He's just gonna start with punching me in the face 20 million times. And I'm, I'm not dead. I guess. I'm dead. Like, there's no way out of this. <laughs> That's it! Fuck me! <laughs> this game is... What the hell? I think what we learned here is that I need to up my bullshit skill to, to 100. And that's the only way to even have a chance. Hey, what's up, old man? Will you give me a discount? No. Fuck you. Uh, I have an important question to ask you. Um, I, I'm very peaceful. <clears throat> let's, let's be diplomatic about this. I just want the best for you, man. Success! The old man rubs his chin in contemplation and looks at you in doubt. Maybe, maybe, I may be wrong, which I probably am, but it seems to me 
But you're telling the truth. Of course I'm telling the truth. Yeah, alright. No point denying it. We really could use additional protection. Even if it has to be at the cost of a part of our profit. Okay, tell them that I've agreed. Largely thanks to your diplomatic ways. Thanks. That's time for me to go. Fuck. I need to go. Now. Wow. I can't believe it. So I needed to... Well, 80 wasn't enough. I had to go with... Well, I went with 100, but... Maybe uh, less would have been acceptable. But obviously this was an incredibly hard check. But it, it did, I think, allow for the best... I don't know if it's the best outcome. I think the best outcome would be is that we kill the bandits. I think that's the best outcome. I still look so fucking casual. Only thing that's changed is that I have a, a knife in my hand. But I can't use because I get killed. It's not about the fact that I I how much damage I do. Is that I just killed, get killed instantly. Even if I had like a crazy weapon. That I obviously don't. I just get killed. I just get killed. I can't do anything. <laughs> but. Well. Speechcraft uh, does help us. Also partially because we are not fighting. Uh, we are not getting loot. So. If I, if I was fighting. Yeah we gotta. Talk our way out of this. 84% chance only. Yeah, we got some XP. But that that's it. <laughs> I'm playing pacifist because I can't fight. <laughs> well, at, least, at least for now. Nope, guys, uh, leave me alone. I was only 84%. Maybe there's a cap to it. I'm not sure what's based on, but I'm just gonna escape. This is a very common theme. Run away. Talk my way out, run away. Bandit factory, I'm back. Holy crap, what was that? I'm usually uh, quite fond of the diplomatic solutions, but here, uh, we're obviously just scamming the guy. Toxin? Yeah, I don't want to... No. Meat. Um, that's fine. Yeah, I don't want that. Okay. I'm not really taking damage, so that that's the plus. Because we're not fighting, we're not taking damage, but oh my. Wait. Yeah, I'm going the right way. I'm no longer hungry. Guess what, I did it. The psycho bitch who was ready to kill the prisoner, like just straight up, shoot him in the head. Done it. I've done it. I would like to free people, but I can't. I'm so weak. I don't know what to do. I need a good gun. I need to kill people for their guns. Or I don't know. Maybe they're just gonna give me some guns. <laughs> well, we can talk, but we need some companions. Anyway, this is a good time to take a break. Thanks for watching, guys, and see you next time.